Hey everyone, Crazy Dave here again with a new video for an updated version of Rooting the Droid Charge. Assuming you're coming from stock gingerbread with all the updates, uh, basically this method is a little different than the other ones that are in my previous videos and used by other people. What this one will do is it will give you root access on your phone without interrupting all the data that's currently on it. You'll be able to keep your apps, text messages, call logs, app data, etc. and keep using the phone. It will look the same uh, without any interruptions. Okay, with that being said, um, a little disclaimer right off the bat. I can't take responsibility for what happens to your phone. Do all this stuff at your own risk. No one on any of the forums takes responsibility for your phone. There is the potential to brick your phone, which means it's not recoverable ever, and it's just a paperweight. Um, I personally haven't seen that happen. I've only seen people that run into problems, think it's bricked, and then uh, we're able to get them out of it. That's not saying that you wouldn't be the first one. Uh, just a little Okay, warning. first things first, uh, you're going to want to go over to the Droid Charge Forum. It's uh, cataloged all this really nicely for us. I'm not affiliated with them in any way, just like what they do. And you can follow the links through my show notes to get to them from there. Uh, you can install Odin on your computer, assuming that we're starting with a Windows-based computer. Uh, you'll need to install the Samsung drivers, which allow the computer to talk to the telephone and recognize it. Um, and then you can install uh, their preference is WinWar. Um, I started using it, really like it. 7-Zip is another program. Both are free. And basically what they do is they allow you to extract files, because the type of file you're going to get may need extraction, depending on where you download it from. Uh, you're also going to need to download uh, Clockwork Mod Recovery. There's a link in there for the latest version. That's key. You want to use the version they recommend, which is the latest or else you may run into glitches because I ran a bunch of tests with the older ones and uh, it did cause problems. So make sure you're updated. It should have a blue appearance. Okay, on from it. there, you're going to take your telephone. What I did to make it easy is I just emailed myself that specific Droid Charge forum link to my phone, followed it from my phone, and then from there, once you're up and running, uh, go to the section that says put these on your SD card and do not unzip. Basically what you're going to do is just simply click the download link. It'll download a program called Super User to your phone, and it'll download the kernel to your phone that you need. Um, the difference with the, with the Super User version that's from the forum through the link is that it's not the one in the market. That's key. You need to get this All right. Um, even though this allows you to keep your current settings in your phone and all your data and everything else, for the sake of argument, I suggest you back up. Uh, there's multiple ways to do this, even when you're unrooted. Uh, depends on what you want to save. For example, my Google contacts are synced with Google, so all my contacts are there. Uh, you can go to google.com on your computer to verify that they're there. Um, all of my apps are synced through either the Google app market or through the Android app market. If you have anything on there that's aftermarket, uh, make sure you can retrieve it again just in case. Uh, for photos, if you use Google+, Plus you can go ahead and take uh, Google Plus and do a private folder and it allows you to wirelessly sync all your photos as you take them over either the cell network or through your computer or your Wi-Fi network when you get home. But there's different options like that out there, so look around depending on what you want to back up. After you get root, backup becomes a little bit more easy. Okay, from there you're going to need to make sure that your phone is charged, preferably with at least 100%, but uh, uh, they recommend a minimum of 50 just so you can get through this whole process. Okay, from here you're going to go ahead and uh, make sure you got Odin on your computer. Uh, that's going to be your interface to your telephone. And then you're going to make sure that uh, your Samsung drivers are good to go and recognizing the telephone. You can do that by plugging it in and see what the computer tells you. Uh, from there you're going to need to go into download mode. There's a couple of ways to do this. Uh, you can go ahead and read on the forum there on how to get into that process or uh, the way that I generally have done it in the past, uh, you just take the battery out of the phone after you have the phone powered off. You plug the USB cable into the phone. Um, you hold the volume down button and then you just plug it into the computer and that will drop you into download mode. Uh, it will populate the yellow triangle. From there, you'll see uh, COM in yellow appear on Odin. That way you know that it was recognized. Uh, 
If that isn't there, the phone is not being seen. So you're going to need to work on that problem before you proceed any further. Okay, this is another important piece that you needed in there. Uh, you need to make sure that uh, if you follow my uh, getting into download method there with removing the battery, make sure that after you have it connected and in download mode, that you reinsert the battery into the back of the phone. Uh, that is a key component to this for it to take and have a good to go green pass, or else you potentially will have a failure. Okay, from there on Odin, you're going to go ahead and uncheck auto reboot. So uncheck auto reboot, and the only checked box is F reset. Time. Okay, this is really important. The next step is to make sure that you only click PDA. Again, really, really important. Only click on PDA. Anything else could potentially break your phone because this file is not made for those other sections. So clicking again on PDA, uh, it'll populate a little file box just like you would see you know, in any version of Windows. Uh, from there, you're going to go ahead and select the clockwork mod file you just downloaded. Is a, uh, the file is going to be a .md5 file. Okay. Again, before you hit any buttons, double check that you're on PDA only. From there, you're going to go ahead and press Start on Odin, and the progress above the clockwork export will change, and you'll see as it progresses that you'll eventually get to a green pass. That means everything took and you're good to go. If you didn't get to that point, something isn't right and we need to go backwards and check those steps. Okay, from here we're going to go ahead and go into recovery mode. The phone is off, the battery is back inserted into it. Uh, you're going to go ahead and hold the volume up, the home key, and press the power button. When you see the Samsung logo appear, go ahead and release the power button and continue to hold the up button and the home key. This will drop you into Clockwork Mod, which in my case is 5.0.2.7. You want to go ahead and make sure you're running the latest. It'll be blue in color. Uh, if you have the yellow in color, it's more than likely that is the older version, and uh, you need to switch that up. Uh, from there, you're going to navigate through and go through all the menus. You're going to Move through the menus using the volume up and down keys. Uh, selection comes with the power button compression. And then go back to the menu by navigating to the menu options. All right, from here, uh, you're going to go ahead and install the zip from the SD card. Then choose zip from SD card. Find and install the kernel that you downloaded earlier. Uh, it's more than likely in the download file unless you've told your phone to put stuff somewhere else. It will always drop it into the download folder. From there, select Mounts in the menu, and then Mount System. If the option says Unmount System, then you are good to go. But you need to select Mounts so that it says Mount System, and then goes to Unmount System as the remaining option. Uh, repeat steps two and three, but this time choose the super user zip file that you downloaded. So basically you go through the same exact process, but now you're putting super user on there. Then go ahead and select the reboot option. Okay, a key component to this is that you booted right into Clockwork Mod and you went ahead with this process of putting the kernel on there and then super user. If you fail to do this and you allow the phone to boot all the way up, what it does is it'll automatically remove Clockwork Mod if you did not get the kernel to take. So you have to do these steps over again. The files are still on the phone. You just got to make sure that you reflash Clockwork Mod to the phone again for it to show up for you to use it. The kernel itself is what allows Clockwork Mod to stay on your phone. All right, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Uh, hope this helps somebody out there. Uh, if it did, 
feel free to subscribe to my video as it motivates me to continue to make more videos. Again, I'm not affiliated with Joy Charge Forums, but thanks a lot because they really work hard to make one simple, most updated method. Uh, there's a thousand ways to skin a cat, so there's other options out there, but this generally is always kept up to date and will always show you the, probably the best way to get root on your phone. From there, uh, you've opened the door to whatever you want to do next. Again, thanks a lot. Uh, feel free to subscribe. Follow me on Twitter. See ya. <laughs>